y'all, and welcome to the Crazy Sock Lady podcast YouTube channel. My name is Kay, and I am the host of this channel. Here we chat about all of my knitting, and sometimes there's some crocheting. Basically, all the yarn, all the time. That's what we're going to chat about here. Thank you so much for joining me for episode 68 today. It is Thursday, May 9th. And we have so much to talk about today. So we have a giveaway winner to announce, so make sure that you stay tuned. We'll talk about that a little bit later. I have a new design to show you guys. We have a new knit along that has started. I have a couple of works in progress, a finished object. I have notes so that I hopefully don't forget anything. So let's go ahead and jump right in. First off, you may notice something a little different. I got a haircut. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably already seen that. Um, but I got my haircut. When did I get this done? The weekend before last? Um, it. I just needed something fresh and fun for summer. It's just starting to get so hot here already. So I thought, let's just chop it off. I haven't had my hair cut this short in probably six to eight years. Around that time frame, seven years maybe. Um, but it feels amazing. I think they ended up taking like six inches off. So it feels good. It's taking some getting used to because my hair's been long for so long, but I'm absolutely loving how just fresh and light it feels. Let's go ahead and jump right in with the knitting. That's what you're really here to talk about, not my haircut. <laughs> so first up, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as the crazy sock lady. And we do have a group for this podcast on Ravelry, if you head over, look at the groups tab at the top, hit that, type in Crazy Sock Lady Podcast, it should pull it right up there. If you don't feel like searching for any of these things, all you have to do is go right down here below this video. There's a down bar, you just hit the little like arrow looking thing and it'll pop down. It's gonna have links to everywhere that you can find me, links to shops that I talk about, all the show notes are down there, links to project pages, patterns. So everything should be linked right down there below for you guys. And we have a couple of things to talk about with the Ravelry group before we start showing some knitting. So first up, I want to let you guys know we have two Swapless Swaps open right now. If you're not familiar with the Swapless Swap, what it is is there's a different yarn dyer each month and these are to get mini skeins. So the yarn dyer that's listed, you'll get 10 40 yard mini skeins from that yarn dyer. The price varies on where it is shipping to. It starts at $35 and goes up to $45. $35 I think is for US residents and then it goes up if you're international, but there'll be links down below that'll take you directly to the two that we have open. All of the info about how much is due, how you pay, when it's due, when it'll ship, all of that will be in the thread. So the first one we have is Yarn Matrix, and she added more spots for this. She added, I can't remember exactly how many she added, but there are 21 still left. This closes May 15th, so if you want to go ahead and snag a spot, you can go ahead and go over and put your name in there. The money is due by May 15th for this one. And then the second one that just opened up is A Busy Life, and there are 49 spots in this one. And it closes June 15th. So you have a little while left to sign up for that one and get your money due. Get your money due. Get your money in. <laughs> I'm feeling a little out of practice because I've kind of dwindled back to going every other week with podcasting because life has just been so crazy lately. Um, so I'm feeling a little out of practice today. Now something super fun that has started over in the Ravelry group. We have a new knit along. So last episode, we have the giveaway for the yarn, which we'll talk about in a bit. And I also asked what knit alongs you guys would be interested in. There were so many ideas thrown out. There were quite a few for a summer garment cowl. And there's actually one going on right now. If you head over, take a look at the Fool of Knit podcast, Karen and Susan, they have a summer, I think it's a tea or tank cowl is the name of it, 
but head over they have a group on Ravelry I'll be sure to link everything below to where you guys can find them and check out their podcast they are hilarious and if you're wanting to knit some summer garments that's the perfect opportunity I probably should have checked to see when it ended and all of that because I can't remember off the top of my head but I'll link everything down below so there were also a lot of people that wanted a sock knit along and I thought last year, or the past two years, I've done a year long sock knit along, but this year I took a break from that. So I thought, let's do one just throughout the summer. So we are going to do the spring and summer sock cowl. It is started right now. So it ends at September 23rd. Whips are allowed, works in progress. Shorty socks are allowed, crochet is allowed. It doesn't just have to be a knitted sock. It could be a crocheted sock. Um, let's see, was there anything else? Don't think I wrote anything else down to go over as far as that goes. Like I said, the full list of rules, guidelines, they're going to be over. What is my hair doing? There will be, some people have offered up some coupon codes for yarn and things for the knit along. So I'm going to put those in the chatter thread for you guys to take advantage of. And then we have some prizes that are already on their way to me for this knit along. I can't wait to show you guys these prizes. I am so excited about the prizes for this knit along. Your mind is going to be blown when you see what we have coming this way. Hopefully by next episode, it'll be here and I can show you guys. You're going to, oh my goodness, I don't even know. You're going to be so excited. So once the prizes come, I will start a list in the chatter thread listing those and I'll show them on the podcast as I receive them. And also, if you use any of my designs, the Crazy Sock Lady um, sock designs, then you get a double entry into the knit along. There is a coupon code right now that is good until May 12th for my sock patterns. You can get 15% off if you use the coupon code SOCKS. So I'll link the Ravelry store down below where all of my patterns are listed if you're interested in knitting any of those socks, which is kind of the perfect segue into the new design that is coming out today. By the time this goes up, it'll already be up on Ravelry. Should be if everything goes as planned. <laughs> so it is a sock design, shocker, and it is called Wild Heart. Oh, it, I match. It, <laughs> it totally matches my shirt. Obviously, I have a bit of a favorite color palette. So this is Wild Heart. The yarn that I used for this is by Emily of Wolfiend. And the colorway is Wine. It's perfect. I love red wine. I love this color. <laughs> this is on her 7525 sock base, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. The pattern for this is written for cuff down with instructions for a slip stitch, heel flap, and gusset. Show you the front. The pattern just runs down the front. And I love how it flows right from the cuff down into the pattern. So this pattern does have some twists and within the pattern repeat, there's one row where there are two cables. Not hard at all. Don't feel intimidated by them, I promise. Cables look so pretty and fancy, but they are not at all hard to do. So don't be scared, but it is a very easy to memorize pattern repeat, I promise. So I hope that you guys are excited about this. The inspiration for the pattern name came from my absolute very favorite Mumford and Sons song called Wild Heart. If you have not heard it, I'll see if I can find a link and link it down below. I love it. When I saw them in concert, it was the one I was so hoping that they would play and they did it because it's off the new album and it hasn't been a single or anything. So I didn't get to hear it live, but oh man, it's my favorite 
Mumford and Son song ever. I just get goosebumps when I hear it. So this is Wild Heart. I hope that you guys will head over to Ravelry and take a look. The coupon code is good for this as well. So again, it's socks and that'll get you 15% off until Sunday, May 12th. I have one finished object to share with you guys today. I finished the Autumn in Rhinebeck socks that I was working on last episode. I did these two at a time on US1 2.25 millimeter needles and I cast on 64 stitches. So the yarn is by Adelaide Cottage in her Autumn in Rhinebeck colorway. And it does have some Stellina. I don't think that it'll really show up, but it does have some gold toned Stellina and it. it is absolutely gorgeous. So for these, I did my normal slip stitch heel flap and gusset. And I love them. I can't wait. These are definitely going to go to ride back with me this year. So these will probably get put aside and saved until then so that I can wear them while I'm in ride back. Um, the sock blockers that I have these on are from Burning Impressions. These were a gift from my friend Donna in North Carolina. I love them. So that's the only finished object that I have. I have finished another pair of socks, but it's a design um, that I can't show yet. It's for a collaboration that I'm doing. So more to come on that probably next month, I would say. June sometime. Um, that's the only other thing that I finished since we chatted last. Oh, well, of course I finished these. This is just too funny to me that they match perfectly with my shirt. And let's see, works in progress. I have a couple of those that are socks. <laughs> All I have been knitting on lately are socks, whether it's designs or just vanilla socks. Um, I really need to get on the ball and knit some garments. I wanted to knit so many garments this year and have like, all new garments to wear the whole time that I'm in Rhinebeck this year and I haven't even finished one. I started the pavement and I'm not even done with it yet. So I don't know I'm just kind of riding the sock wave right now and that's this time of you know this year that's all I can seem to get the time to work on. So I'm just kind of riding that wave and going with it and hoping that there are days ahead where I can work on some garments. Right now it's just all about the socks because they are so easy and portable and I can take them to basketball practice or fencing practice or all of these things that are going on right now. It just seems like socks are the only thing that I can manage to get to work on. So let's talk about the works in progress that I have. I have the first one in a bag that was a gift from my friend Karen when we went to Maryland, sheep and wool last year. And in here I have a pair of socks for Wyatt. So he picked out this Knit Picks Felici in this seafaring colorway. And then he also went through my little cabinet back here that has kind of leftover bits, mini skeins, and he picked out these two, which I don't even know. I think this must have came from somebody in the red, possibly did too, or maybe it was from some socks I did or something. Um, green is getting blown out because it's very bright. So he picked out these, the green for the heels and the red for the toes. So I'm only on the first one. This is what I have so far. I do have the heel in. So it, I mean, it's green and there's a green in here. It matches, doesn't match perfectly with the green, but why it doesn't care. So I'm not bothered. So for this sock, I did 56 stitches and I did knit two, purl two for the ribbing for I think 15 or 16 rounds and then the same amount for the leg. I do have a project page. I'll link it below for this. And I did a slip stitch heel flap and gusset. 
and I still have a little ways until it's time for the toe. So these have been in my purse. This goes with me everywhere. Anytime I have just a little bit of time in the car or while I'm waiting at the dentist yesterday, anywhere I go, I can pull it out and get just a row or two done and it'll eventually get finished. So those were on a US 1 2.25 millimeter 32 inch Chowgu circular. That's why it's latest socks. Oh, I better put the minis back in here. And the next and last work in progress that I have to show you today, I have in a gorgeous bag from In a Pickle Knitting. This is one of my favorite bags. I love the floral. I love the zipper on the outside. There's yarn guides on the inside that snap. I love that they snap because I hate the ones where you stick them through and then your yarn is just stuck there forever. So I like that these you could snap open and take your yarn out of the guide if you wanted to. And then it also has a pocket on the inside. And I do have a matching needle cozy as well. So this is another pair of socks and this is for my friend and neighbor Stephanie. She requested a pair of socks. So I got started. She wanted girly colors, pinks and purples. And so I figured I would go with Knit Picks. Knit Picks is a very affordable, easy to care for yarn. So I thought I would go with that so that she doesn't have to stress too much about how she takes care of the socks. I thought this would be perfect. So I went with the Knit Picks Felici in the Hopscotch colorway. I thought that this was nice for girly colors. There's pink and purple and yellow and blue. It's super fun. So I've got the first one going. And that's how far I am. And I decided to do a pattern for these. I decided that with the sock knit along starting, I would do a design of mine that I haven't done in a while that I love to do, especially love to do it with self-striping. So I cast on the Rhinebeck Rumi's sock pattern. I just think it works up so well with self-striping. I did just a knit two, purl two ribbing. And I've got these on my signature DPNs, US 1 2.25 millimeter, and I cast on 64 stitches. So these are my other take along knitting. The Rhinebeck Rumi's pattern is only a four row repeat. It's very easy to memorize and kind of read. You can look at your knitting and see what row you're on, what row you need to do next. So it's one that I love taking along with me and I can work on it at basketball and not have to put too much thought into the row that I'm on. And then when I, I count how many I've done, I just count by pattern repeats. And that's super easy to do with this because you see this stitch that goes over here. There's one of those rows where you do that stitch per pattern repeat. So I can just go down and count how many pattern repeats I've done based on that stitch. Kind of a little tip if you're working that pattern up, which if you are, use it as a double entry for the sock knit along. If you're interested in getting the pattern, you can get 15% off if you use the code socks. That's only good until Sunday. So make sure you head over and take advantage. That's it for all the knitting things that I have to show you today. Now let's go ahead and announce the prize winner from last episode. And then I have something, or actually two things I'm gonna show you that I received in the mail since the last time we chatted. So for the giveaway, I received some yarn from Mint Rain Hand Dyed Yarns. And these two self-striping beauties were sent for giveaways. So I thought we would go ahead and do a giveaway last episode for one. And I asked for you guys to comment which one you would like if you won. So I did random number generator. I went through all of the comments and the winner is Karen Hoyt. And she picked Meadow, which is this one. This gorgeous pink and green, so pretty. So Karen Hoyt, 
If you are watching, please get in touch with me. My email address, email address, email address will be down below in the down bar. Send me an email with your mailing address and I'll get this out to you as soon as possible. So congratulations and thank you so much to everybody that entered. This one, the winter sunrise will be put back here in the prize cubby and maybe we'll save it for the soft knit along or maybe we'll use it for another giveaway before then. We'll just have to see. So a couple things I received in the mail. I have to show you guys this. So when we were in Flagstaff, my friend Margaret, um, this was the knitting group, our trip we went on up there. She pulled out this container with all of these light bulb stitch markers in different colors. And I finally got around to ordering it. <laughs> I had to have it. So I ordered this off of Amazon. I'll try to put a link down below. Um, I think they were sold out. I think I bought the last one. But I'm going to check again and I'll put the link down below for this container. It's so many different colors. I mean, okay, I don't want to spill them. Look at all of those. Oh my goodness. I love them so much. So I'll link it down below if anybody else is crazy like me and likes the light bulb stitch markers and just thinks it's super fun to have them in different colors. I think this was like 750 of them and it wasn't very much. So I'll link it down below for you guys. The next thing I received is from Mad Fuzzy Yarns. So she has sent me a paper here that tells all about the process, what makes her yarn special. So I'm going to go through and give you guys just a little bit of snippets about it. And I'll be sure to link, link everything down below for you guys so that you can check out her yarns as well. So what makes her yarn unique is that it is locally sourced and produced fiber. She is in Maine. So everything is local. The fleece is local. They're from sheep in Maine. She takes these skirted fleeces to Ashland, Maine. It's a six hour round trip, it says, to a one man operated mini mill where it is spun there at this mini mill. And then she herself is in Maine and she dyes the yarn, hand dyes it there in Maine. So everything is local in Maine. I love it. Now, this yarn that she sent me let me show you the colorways and then I'll tell you a bit about the base. So the first one is Cutler Coast. It's going to get blown out. The label is. Such pretty, deep, rich colors. And then this one is Kevin's 4th of July, which I giggled when I saw because my dad's name is Kevin. So I just thought that was too cute that she sent this one because she probably has no idea that my dad's name is Kevin, <laughs> but I just thought it was fun. Definitely a fun 4th of July colorway, I think. So the base that this yarn that she sent me is on is called Pretty Tough. It is 80% East Frisian wool and 20% Firestar nylon. Let me tell you what, this feels like sturdy workhorse yarn. And in saying that, while it's not like a super wash, it's not super duper soft, it does not feel scratchy to me. I don't believe that it feels scratchy. Um, it feels like a workhorse yarn that is going to hold up for socks. And the she put in here as well, because I thought at first looking at them that there was some Stellina in them, but the Fire Star makes them sparkle. I don't think that you'll be able to pick it up. There's actually a piece of glitter in there. Um, I don't think that you'll be able to pick up the sparkle, which is a total shame, but it does have a sparkle to it, but there is no Stellina. It's so pretty. And she says in here that the East Frisian wool has a very long staple length not the softest fiber, which I said, you can tell that it is a workhorse yarn, but she put in here that it wears like iron, doesn't pill or shrink and is perfect for socks. I'm gonna test this out, guys. I'm going to knit a pair of socks. I don't know which one I'm going to do. Um, 
I haven't decided yet. But as soon as I get a couple of things off my needles, this will be my next sock cast on. I cannot wait to work with this yarn. I'm so excited to try out a new combination of wool that I have never tried before, a feel that I've never tried before. Something that's done in the US is, you know, in Maine, everything she is local to her, I think that makes it so special. So I'm very excited to try this out and let you guys know more about this base as I work up with work it up and wear the socks. I hope you guys all head over and check out her shop. I'll link it down below. She has such gorgeous colorways. Um, I'm excited to try. And these skeins, I did not say, they are 400 yards, 100 grams. And they're both on that same, what was it called? Pretty tough. I was going to say tough sock. Pretty tough sock base. All right, so I think that pretty much wraps it up today. Not really too much to chatter about. We've been crazy busy with stuff with the kids. Um, Austin, thank you guys so much. If you follow me on Instagram and you saw that Austin hurt his foot, thank you guys for reaching out and sending well wishes and prayers and thoughts his way and checking in to see how he was doing. It definitely made his day to, to see, hear about the messages and, um, yeah, it was just so nice of you guys to do that. And he is doing much better. So he, what ended up happening, we aren't sure exactly when he hurt his foot. This can be something that just happens from repetitive jumping. It's not a sprained ankle or anything like that. It's his, the joint at the base of his big toe on his right foot, where it joins to his foot. That is where the sprain occurred. Um, it was just nasty. Very, very swollen and painful. He's been out of basketball for about a week so far, which if you know him, has been torture on him and me <laughs> because he has not been the most patient person about this. He's very frustrated that he has not been able to play. He's missed practices, which he's went and watched so that he doesn't miss any plays, but you know, he's not been able to practice or play in games. So we're hoping he's going to practice tonight. The swelling's down, his foot isn't hurting. So he's gonna go to practice tonight and see how it goes. He played out front for a little bit last night on the hoop that we have out there and did good. It wasn't bothering him, it didn't swell back up but he wasn't doing as much as he will in practice. So we'll see how practice goes tonight. He's gonna kind of ease back into it and see how it feels, but hopefully we're good to go. So we'll see how tonight goes. And Wyatt's been enjoying fencing. He actually won his first fen fencing match last night. So he was very excited about that. Um, we were super excited for him and proud of him. He's really enjoying fencing and he's excited to, I think, that's something he wants to continue on with, which is so great for him. He's tried out so many different things. So we'll see if this is kind of what he's landed on that he wants to stick with and really work on. So that's basically what we've been busy with and our patio. I'm looking out the window at it right now. We had, when we moved in our yard, the previous owners had not really kept up with the landscaping. So you could tell that at one time it probably looked really nice, but they didn't take care of it or I don't know if the house just sat empty for a while over the summer and I don't know but it has not been a pretty sight out there and we just haven't done anything since we moved in but we finally kind of figured out our vision for back there and that's what we've been working on the past two weekends we had we hired a company to come extend the patio and lay some pavers so we have this nice big area out there now with the pavers um, we got some patio furniture this past weekend we did a little diy project where we bought these huge planters and these four by four posts and made kind of lamp posts with them so we did two of them one for each corner on the far ends of the patio and we just did like the quick concrete mixed all that up, put the posts in, let those sit. And then we strung lights, the Edison bulb lights from the porch all the way around the patio. So because we've been sitting out there since the, we got the patio furniture and all of that, and I couldn't see to knit when it would get dark. So we decided to do some lights out there. So now I can see 
to knit while we're sitting out there, but it looks great. So now we just have to get the rest of the yard done. We have the patio done. So this weekend, um, depending on Austin's basketball schedule, you know, if he jumps back in with his games, we're going to try to get started on the rest of the work for the yard. We have some of the concrete curb that had been there from previous landscape to tear out, bushes to trim, all of that fun stuff before we can really have them come. Um, we're going to have the same company that did the pavers come and finish the rest of the yard for us. So we've got a little bit of pre-work to do before we have them come out and really do the tough stuff. <laughs> So, all right, I think that catches you guys up on everything that's been going on. Thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget that we have the sock knit along going on. The coupon code for any designs, any sock designs from me, you can get 15% off by using the code socks. That does include the new design, Wild Heart, that is out today. Another sneak peek at this one because it is so pretty. So head over and check this out. There'll be a link down below for you guys. So I will chat with you guys again soon. Until then, happy knitting. Bye.